So, so whilst I haven't been talking about procedure in court to any great detail because there, the environment is so fluid, it is so different in different parts of the world and ultimately it is an environment that no one should relish attending because of those variables. I have been focusing very, very strongly on the element of contract because that in fact is what it did. So I appreciate what you're saying, but can we jump through to the question? And, and if you feel that we, we haven't yeah. covered this section on, on okay, contract, I, I would love you to uh, shoot me an email and maybe in a follow-up call we can talk a bit more about, about people's behaviour in the court. Is that okay? You are unmuted. Uh, okay, can I speak now? Yeah, please, please. please. Okay. I've already sent you an email. Um, two of them, as a matter of fact. Uh, um, and and as, as I said, I did have another question, which I didn't ask because I believe this was more important. But I will relinquish the mic to you. Well, then, I, you, you've, you've got experience. So fire away with the question if you've got that question. And if I haven't responded, I do try and respond to every email. I'm sorry if you've sent two and there hasn't been a response, then that, that is remiss of me. Um, as I say, I try and answer every email that people send me, and I get quite a few, but um, please please ask a question if you've got a question there, or, or, or please resubmit to me the, the email, and I will definitely, when I see it, respond. If it's a question email or request information, I'll, I'll send it. So please, fire away, genetic memory, please. No, no. As I said, I just wanted to make that statement. I thought it was important. I relinquish. Okay, thank you. All right, we have, uh, let's see, a question about registering a baby. Frank, real quick, and so, uh, before I get uh, to the next phone phone line. Uh, over here on chat, um, there's a question about registering babies with One Heaven, and uh, this is someone that has a niece uh, that was not registered through a hospital. And uh, do you have any thoughts or um, suggestions on how that would well, work? I, absolutely. Look, I mean, a number of things, uh, and I know that people have, many people have started to wake up to this and, and choose to have home birth and choose to try and keep their children away from the system. But I, I believe there's a happy medium and, and it goes this way. Uh, you can go and get the, the, the trust number from the system and and in fact when when the baby um you know when you have a new baby what you want the system to state and have it on the record is that the parents are the trustees now this is not something that the system normally permits and you have a game they play so uh, parents can play a unique and incredibly crucial role in exposing the system by simply requesting the system honour the rights of the parents to be trustees and here is the first number for the baby. Now, of course, if the system does not recognise and refuses to recognise the parents as trustees, then that is an excellent opportunity to pursue an EDP-type scenario and, and wrap up the system because there the system is telling you that they, doesn't, they don't recognise the baby is being free. They will not let that baby be recognised as free, nor will they recognise the parents as being trustees. So by all means, register the, the, the baby with the um, UKDA number, but don't avoid the registration process necessarily with the state. In fact, it's a perfect opportunity to place a state in dishonour because what normally happens is no one normally challenges the system to say, and where do you confirm that the parents are the trustees? You're creating a trust. Where's the document that gives the trusteeship to the parents? They won't do it. They refuse to do it. Get them in dishonour. So that's, it's up to each parent. I mean, the, the system is at its weakest with a newborn baby, believe it or not. It's at its weakest because that exposes the evil of the system at more than at any other point because that's when they claim the baby's dead, they claim the flesh of the baby as its property. You expose that 
They can't take the baby from you. They can't do anything at that point other than put themselves in dishonour. So I leave it up to the caller to consider what they want to do. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. We have a, a better way on the line, phone line. A better way. Are you there? Um, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, great. My name is... Uh, hi, thank you. Um, yes, I have a question about that um, SS4 number. Now, are we trying to get the 98 EIN when we apply with the SS4? I, I missed that last bit of the question. Are we trying to get... An, an, an 98 series EIN number. Um, I'm going to have to defer to Terry on that one. What's the series number? Do, do you know, Terry, what what series number it is for an, an EIN SS4? Um, well, preferably... The goal is to get a 98 number as a foreign entity, a foreign trust. Okay. So so this is why uh, Ron and several others have got, tried some things and are uh, seeing what we're coming back with so we can um, get that correct, just like Frank was saying earlier. So if, if we could get that 98 number, that's ideal. Okay. Um, that's been the goal, to, to try to get that. So... Obviously, uh, many of you know some of those uh, things that are required, um, no, uh, no zip code and things like that, certain ways of putting the information on. Also, it's been recommended that um, if you uh, print off the form and mail it in to Philadelphia, that may get the actual results that we're looking for. Okay. And suppose um, someone has gone through, because myself, I've gone through the process of trying to apply for the 98 EIN before, but I have not heard anything. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't with the trust, num trust number or number. So how would I, you know, correct that if I've already applied but haven't heard anything? Well, it's a new, it's a new entity, so I, I don't think you have anything held against you because you're dealing with a new entity. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. And one more last question. Now, how does applying for that EIN number affect um, someone who's in foreclosure? I heard you say something about... Um, okay, foreclosure. We didn't talk about foreclosure tonight, but I'm, foreclosure to me is a, is a crucial issue that we need to talk about. Um, on foreclosure, there are two sections in the positive law that um, I really recommend anyone that is facing foreclosure needs to consider. So if you go to one hyphen uh, one hyphen heaven dot org, and you go to uh, positive law. Then, when you get to positive law, go down to uh, article. Where are we? Go down to article 108. Mm -hmm. So get down to 108 under one hyphen heaven dot org canons positive law, and then have a look at canon 1379. Do you have a browser open where you are? Um, yes, I do. I'm trying to pull it up now, as a matter of fact. Okay, try and call it up. When you get there, I'd like you to read out Canon 1379 for us, please. Um, hold on, let's see. Right now, I have right many things open. Let me know when you get there. Okay, I'm having a hard time finding it right now. I have right many things you have open. a hard time? Okay. All right, it's Canon 1379. But look, the reason I want you to go and have a look at it, and just, just quickly, it's, it's this. The, the whole point about the banks, what the banks try and get you to do, people don't realise with a mortgage that the mortgage is of three things. There is the loan, which they obviously know about, the lien, which they know about, but what they don't realise is that you're under a lease. And the tenant, you are the tenant and the bank is a landlord. Have you heard this before? Um, yes, I have. Okay. You understand that the interest attached to the loan is your rent to the landlord. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Okay. If you don't pay rent to the landlord, what's a word that a couple of words that are used to describe a tenant? A tenant that doesn't pay their rent is called what? A a delinquent tenant? Yeah? Right. Okay. When you go to foreclosure and you haven't paid any consideration, you haven't submitted to the clerk's office any um, financial hardship, so you haven't given any statement, you haven't made a deposit and shown a statement that shows that you've put a consideration for every month that you've been the tenant that you haven't paid. It might be $21 a month. I think $21 is the minimum you want to pay. Let's say $50 a month. 
If you don't do that, then you are a delinquent tenant, are you not? No. Then they can order you evicted and they can foreclose on you. Yeah? Okay. So, so, if if someone, you go, has, hmm? so if someone has already gone through foreclosure, then you're still kind of looking at the same It doesn't thing. matter. This is the trick they do. Under the right of redemption, go and have a look. Under the right of redemption, a long-term tenant has the right to redeem themselves at any point, even if a even if a judge has ordered an eviction and the foreclosure, it makes absolutely no difference. You can change your status. You, there's two things you can do. Once you're evicted, you can go back, change the locks, move back in. You now have possession of the property again. Possession's nine tenths of the law. Yeah. Right. The issue for a for a long term tenant is to change their status from being delinquent to paying some consideration. Now, what happens when the landlord rejects the consideration? What do you know about in contract law? Do you know what that means ultimately? Mm, and it's a fair consideration? What does that mean? I'm not sure. Well, they're in dishonor then, yeah? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so the the, the whole point of foreclosures which is frustrating terribly frustrating we haven't done enough on this is that people are believing the hype that the banks are saying is they're not paying anything they're not even going to the clerk they're not putting any in consideration and they're not changing their status from being delinquent you are delinquent if you stop paying your repayments and don't pay any form of rent of course you are once you change that then your status changes entirely yeah Okay. Particularly when you highlight to the court that you know the rules because you're putting in a statement of rent payments and consideration for the last six months or however long you haven't paid rent. Now, that, now the court has on record that you know that the mortgage is an entire fraud. And what does fraud do to contracts? Void them. Exactly. So does that help you with foreclosure? Well, yeah, but suppose I'm not even, um, I'm in a state where I, I'm not even dealing with a court. I'm in a non non-judicial um, state. That, that doesn't matter. Even if, a, even if you're dealing in a state where they don't go to the court, they still wash the, the system through some quasi-legal system, yeah? Right. So you just, you, all you have to do is just go to the local court and lodge it. I mean, it's, it's whenever they send an eviction notice in a state where there's no court, um, intervening and this is the concept of I think um, uh, where there is no kind of foreclosure or replevin on, on uh, assets uh, you can still go to the court and uh, and have this lodged yeah okay right and then right, uh, then it's on the record yeah mm -hmm. and then when the bank reje rejects that then you can follow up with your court with a um, civil action administrative process of issuing um, some form of injury against the bank for fraud, deceptive conduct, yeah, and the full nine yards, yeah? Okay. Now we'll talk more about that because I know that there are a whole range of issues with foreclosures, but you, you, you sound like you do understand the principles behind what's going on with foreclosures, yeah? Right, yeah. And there's just so many players in the game that you really don't know who you're dealing with, who you're supposed to be dealing with because they're like passing the book. But you, you do understand that unless you change your standing of being a delinquent tenant, then you really don't have a lot to go on. Right, okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good. No, thank you. Good on you. All right. Great, Frank. Um, thank you. And uh, let me get to, uh, before I get to the next, phone caller. I have one, a couple of questions here on the chat. Um, back to the special deposit account. Once that account is set up, the question is, could we then deposit, say, a bill from the electric company into it to set off their balance to zero? Yes, you could do that. All right. But why would you want to? Well, if you want to do that, that's fine. I mean, there are different ways. To, yes, you can do that. Yeah. There's some different thought processes there you could consider. Yeah. I um, mean, <laughs> when, when the Cessica visa collapsed, 